Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for a rather special project today. Many times over the years as I've been talking about various Plastiflex handbags that I've added to my collection, Plastiflex, Plastisquare, Plastiflex, all these different brand names that they came out with for these plastic handbags from the 1940s. We've seen them in my Montgomery Wards catalogs before. I've seen people holding them in Candids. They were a big trend in the 1940s thanks to leather rationing, I believe is why these plastic handbags, these novelty handbags first came into prominence. But I'm a big lover of Plastiflex, a big collector of Plastiflex, or as much as I can be. They are quite rare, especially for the like more unique colors. White, black, and brown are the most common, but things like red or yellow, green, blue, rainbow do exist out there. Uh, tortoiseshell kind of colorways are a little on the more common side, but uh, of course the possibilities here are endless, and I've always lamented that no one was printing these tiles anymore because with 3D printing technology, the ability to scan things in, uh, reconstruct things in the computer, design new tile designs even, and then of course print them or make molds and pour them out of resin, what have you. There just seemed a lot of possibilities for reconstructing these handbags that no one seemed to be trying, and if they have, do let me know about it in the comments below. And many 3D designers and printers have reached out to me to say that they do think it's possible and they'd love to work with me on this, but unfortunately I just did not have the time to devote to the whole project coming together. Uh, there's a lot of things I would like to do with these. I would love to have, you know, bug uh, designed tiles and things like that. There's a lot of ideas that brew away in my brain, but I just don't have the time to devote to a huge project right now because I'm working on so many other ridiculous things. So the only way this is really going to happen is if someone just took the initiative and tried it all on their own and then let me know about it, which luckily is exactly what ended up happening. So that's right, I have some brand new 3D printed green Plastiflex tiles to hopefully make into a 1940s reproduction clutch today. Let's go ahead and dive on into this project and I'll tell you a little bit more how it came together. But to get our bearings around the design of these handbags, let's go ahead and look at this patent again, filed by Florence Coleman working with R. Apple in September of 1941. And I was able to find an excellent blog post covering the history and doing a lot of in-depth research into the beginnings of these bags in a post from the Vintage Purse Museum Photo and History Archive online. I will go ahead and link that below for those of you who would like to read up on the full history of the original Plastic Flex handbag. But in general, we're looking at a basket woven flat cord with plastic tiles sort of threaded onto them. So the tiles themselves are almost threaded like beads onto the cord as they are woven together to hold the structure of this. It's basically uh, you know, if you were weaving with beads, but on a larger scale, a much more Lego sized scale almost. And these pieces, from what I can tell, were originally made out of cellulose acetate plastic or acetate cellulose, whichever it was, uh, an earlier kind of plastic. And handling my vintage handbags, they are very lightweight. That is going to be the difference between the handbags in my vintage collection and the new ones that I make today, because the modern plant based resin tiles I'll be using today in the end are a tiny bit heavier once put together into the bag. But here are a couple of videos I was sent on Instagram from my Plastiflex fairy god people, as it were. Christina and Tim started designing and making these, sort of heard my call to action for 3D printers everywhere in a couple of my videos, and decided to give these a try. They spontaneously took up the challenge to go ahead and try and 3D render a replica tile to the main style of Plastiflex, printing them out of liquid resin using a UV resin printer, and of course weaving them together with some spare ribbon that Christina had, where we can already see the structure of a Plastiflex handbag taking shape. They continued refining the design on their own. Of course, I was just excited to see results, but I was not really involved in this process other than being a cheerleader and just being very excited, honestly. But here is the 3D render of the tile. You can see what this looks like in 3D space. These are a little bit thicker than the actual vintage tiles are, but they are otherwise about virtually the exact same size, one inch by one inch here. Um, most of the dimensions of this are very accurate to the actual vintage tiles. And here for the 3D people in the audience, we can see the tile from the bottom up, basically, is what's going on here. Like most 3D printed things, this is printed in tiny, 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 tiny micro layers. So each tile has, you know, dozens of layers to make up the smooth design in the end, because they are rather smooth. And this style of 3D printer is one I haven't actually seen before. I'd never seen a resin printer until Christina and Tim sent me this footage. And here you can see they're printing the green tiles we'll be using today. They agreed to print me a set of these so I could try putting together one of the bags to show you today. These machines are incredibly fascinating to me now that I've seen them at work. Basically a plate dips into this resin liquid and then a light underneath, almost like a scanner kind of bed, underneath the liquid um, shines a UV light only in the places for that layer and it cures the resin in tiny little micro layers using UV light from below. Honestly, it's still, I think, just kind of magic. I'm not exactly positive how this works. I haven't done a ton of research on it because luckily my involvement in this has basically been receiving tiles and being overjoyed. Uh, that's pretty much the maximum of involvement I was in in the design and printing of these. But yes, Christina and Tim very kindly printed a full set of these green tiles for me to be able to put together a full-size Plastiflex 
reconstructed 1940s handbag here. They have also graciously uploaded the 3D tile, which I will link to below if you'd like to print your own, and you will find a link to their Etsy shop in the description as well. And here I am holding one of the 3D printed tiles that they sent me. This is a gray tile, sort of a grayish black. They only have enough of this resin to do one half of the bag, and I'll show you that bag later. But here I am comparing the tile to the original Plastiflex tile here. I have this black and red Plastiflex that I found within the last couple of years. I can't remember exactly which year I now to this one. I probably talked about it in a haul whenever I grabbed it because it is in such fabulous condition. We had counted up a couple of different Plastiflexes um, and they're mostly like around 12 by 7 is the like normal size of these clutches. They do come in different sizes and of course the different manufacturers are making different sizes of tile, different shapes of tile, different patterns of tile, uh, different ways that they weave together. These ones have the four holes like equidistant on the square. Some of them have, um, instead of the holes being visible, there's just little slits in the sides of the tile. So they're all designed differently. And of course the options for ways to do this are pretty endless. As long as you have like something that can be woven together, you could put whatever you want on the face of the tile, but also just the shapes of the tile. Anything that fits together will work. So if you wanted to make sort of fish scales, mermaid scales, dragon scales, things like that. You could do changing shapes that fit together, almost like Escher drawings. You could do things that are more like um, chain mail or um, even like Japanese armor pieces fit together. It'd be really cool to make one of these that look like samurai armor. I can't be the only one who thinks that's an absolutely fabulous idea. No one, and especially not me, owns the design or like the basic idea for Plastiflex anymore. Even at the time, the patent wasn't very uh, strictly enforced. I think they tried to sue one person and that was in the 40s. They were making these from the early 40s and then the company that made Plastiflex itself was closed in 1960. So there really is only about a 20 year window when these were being made originally. And you can see the resin here has a almost, has a matte shine, which makes no sense. Sort of a velvety soft touch look to them as compared to the more ABS plastic, sort of hard Lego plastic feel of the original tiles. But I laid all my tiles out here. We are gonna be making one giant rectangle and then folding it in half, which seems to be how my other Plastiflex handbags from the forties were done. I did find some wax coated cotton cord, um, but I was having a hard time finding a good green color because I wanted something flat, about four millimeters in width. I ended up going with this three millimeter wide leather cord in a dark green shade. And like anything woven, we are going to have basically a warp and a weft our like vertical threads and our horizontal threads. First thing I'm going to do here is string on all these tiles onto their vertical uh, threads, I suppose, as it were. Uh, forgive me for not having the proper weaving technology. This is the only thing I've ever woven. Uh, I've never actually made any other sort of textile, if we can call this a textile, a, a plastic textile as it were. But yes, I'm just going to thread all of these on like beads onto the leather cord here, making sure I leave myself a couple of inches at either end that I can sew into the fabric of the bag later on. I'm just cutting more of those cords like so to weave through in the other direction. Now all of these are just woven straight through each tile and it will be this secondary set of cords going the other direction that will weave over and under alternating between rows. If I started one row going over the first cord I will go under it the next time. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. If you've ever seen any basket woven anything you can kind of get what's going on here. Of course my hands are blocking this for most of this first segment which is great. But yes I'm sticking this through the holes of the tile going the opposite direction from the first set and I'm going over and under alternating between tiles and then starting over and under alternating between rows. Hopefully you get what I mean weaving through the tile and then either over or under the cord that is already in place. Turning this into a big plastic mat basically that is woven together. So it's, it holds its shape pretty well. This uh, leather cord that I was using is quite finished. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of friction to it, so they can slide off of it pretty easily. So you'll see that when I want to move this in order to start prepping my fabric for the bag itself, I'm actually using one of my uh, poster board patterns to slip under here and kind of uh, move it away like a giant spatula. But I found this Kona cotton in a very similar shade of green at the quilting section of my local Joann's, of course. Kona cotton being a quilting cotton means that uh, it comes in every shade imaginable, so I was able to find this dusty forest green, no problem. And I cut this out with a few inches to spare, uh, the same size as my rectangle that I had just woven, and then I will go ahead and use some fusible interfacing just to give this a little bit more strength and structure. Then I had to figure out how to put this darn bag together. Now, spoiler alert, I've never made a bag before. Um, I'm not very good at handbag making. It's like the way that sewing is different from hat making because hat making you're thinking in such more of a sculptural 3D way than even you are with clothes uh, because the things you're making are usually like harder whereas clothes need to be sort of soft for you to wear them um, and have some mobility. 
Hats can be quite static, as can handbags. So this is my like first handbag, like successful handbag I've ever made. So if you are a handbag uh, maker, try try not to judge me <clears throat> too harshly. But yes, I have that first interface layer of cotton down. I put my woven pieces in between, and now I'm sandwiching down just the first side. I'm going to sew across all this with my little ends of cord getting caught in that seam. And then I will slide everything down and around to create the tension where I need it. I just want to get this first seam done so that I can have something stable to work with. I am using my zipper foot over here on the machine and I hadn't switched to a leather needle at this point, but because these little pieces of cord were a couple millimeters thick, I ended up switching to a leather needle to sew this. And I was just using a zipper foot so I could get as close as possible to the tiles, but uh, the tiles are about a quarter of an inch thick, if not a tiny bit thicker than that. So um, it's really hard to get quite close while over on the machine, or at least with my machine it is. Now in between the two sides of the bag, you can see I'm trying to create a little bit of like a, I don't know, a quarter inch gap. That is where it's going to fold in half to create the like front and back of the bag. I just want to give a little bit of extra ease there in the cord to facilitate that bending in half. And I next want to go ahead and secure the cords down the other side. They are just getting sandwiched between these two layers of cotton. Of course, I have the layer of cotton with the interfacing right underneath the tiles. And then this is going to be kind of the lining of that. So I just have the single layer of, again, Kona cotton here. And again, I'm trying to stitch as close to the tiles as I can, but I can't get very, very close because of the thickness of them. So I'm not sure this is the best way to put this bag together, by the way. I'm just making it up as I go along. If you have any suggestions for me on ways this would be easier to do, let me know. I was just basically trying to copy my handbags that I have in my collection as best of my ability. And it seemed to me that they were done in this way where it was uh, one big rectangle that was folded in half and that the bag lining was separate from the lining. Like there was a, the plastic tiles and then there was two layers of fabric and then there was a whole separate lining with the zipper inserted. So uh, there were three layers of fabric at least going on. Some of my handbags also have cardboard in them to help structure them out, but this bag was actually gonna be a little bit heavy enough on its own. So I didn't actually add any additional structure other than the tiles and the interfacing to this one. So with my initial lengths of cord stitched down on either side, this turned right side out again, I can start thinking about folding it in half. I wanted to maintain this bit of ease here where the fold needs to be while I basted down the other ends. So I actually stuck some colored pencils here in between the tiles to try and give myself like so that if they wanted to move around on me, they couldn't get too close to one another. Hopefully this makes sense. So I ran some basting stitching down either side of this just to hold the cords in place, if not hold them in the correct place, uh, just to hold them down so none of my tiles were sliding about on me. Um, and then this is the part where I really wished I could get closer. I think it's easiest to do this by hand sewing it. I will machine stitch one side and then I'll slide all my tiles over as far as they can go to try and create, you know, enough tension here so nothing is super loose. So this side I managed to stitch by a machine, but the other side, I just couldn't get close enough to maintain tension and I ended up hand stitching the other side. Yes, and of course, turning this right side out was no longer very fun because this is getting more and more structured by the second. So here I am turning that right side out ooh, and sliding my tiles down like so to try and access the other side. And yes, I am just gonna try and make this as tense as possible. I was feeling bad about having some of my fabric show at the sides until I looked at my other Plastiflex handbags in my collection and they were also showing fabric at the sides. Also, I think the company that made these originally uh, was a leather handbag company. And so they had different kinds of machines for sewing seams together on leather that I do not have. So I think there are separate kinds of like industrial leather sewing machines that can get into corners and structured places easier than I can, at least on my home sewing machine. Of course, I can do things a little bit easier by hand, easier, but it takes more time. And I did have to use a thimble a little bit to get through some of these thicker seams, but I will go ahead and slip stitch this up and down um, for extra security along this other side, just so that I can, again, have as least amount, the least amount of extra fabric showing at the sides as possible. Like so, but yes, please, if you have a better way of doing this, do let me know. Uh, give me your suggestions below, especially if you are interested in handbag making, uh, because again, not my strongest suit, I'm very new to the whole endeavor. But we're looking a lot like this black original plastic flux here. We have a little bit more fabric showing than they do, but they still have their cotton showing. And also you'll notice here that their, that their strips of cord also don't line up exactly at the side seams, which made me feel better as well. So I'm going to take my lining piece of fabric here. This is just uh, the exact size of my rectangle here. I didn't even bother to make it a little bit smaller because if it was a little bit bunched inside, I don't care. Um, so I'm just going to take a metal zipper uh, a little bit, maybe two inches, three inches longer than my opening at the top of the bag. And I'm going to stitch that lining down right side of the lining, like down. This feels so odd to do the bag lining. I, the first time I did this, I did it backwards, which 
Um, and I'll show you the little black bag I made. And you will know the secret that the lining in that one is messed up. But this one, I remember to make the lining backwards because, of course, I need the lining, the, like the right side of the lining, to be inside the bag and the like raw edges like this to be between the lining and the outer layer of the bag. Oh no, none of this makes any sense. I am being confusing as always. Just know that I'm making it up. So it's hard to explain because I don't know what I'm doing. But after I had the zipper in the top edge here, I went ahead and sewed the side seams of my lining here. Again, this was um, done on the fold. So the bottom of this is just the folded edge. And yes, my zipper is longer than my bag like so. So it's just gonna stick on the inside again in between these two layers like so. So I have this little bag to stick inside my bag, basically. This does mean that I can change out this lining if I ever need to uh, for any reason, which is kind of nice, you know, if something spills in your handbag or something like that. Of course, the cotton here, it would soak through to the other layer of cotton, but hypothetically, you could use something else that was a little bit more waterproof if you wanted to. Some of my bags have cotton linings and some of them seem to have like an acetate or rayon kind of lining in them, so uh, it sort of just depends on the bag. Most of them I feel like have cotton, but a few have a more rayon feeling sort of thermoplastic sort of early thermoplastic lining. But I'm just going to position this on the inside and then uh, hand stitch this down all around the top because I couldn't figure out a better way to get this in here. Uh, if there's a way to do this by machine, let me know. Again, I, <laughs> I couldn't figure out a way to do it. So I ended up back stitching this in here um, all along the top edge just to get it in position. This zipper should sit about a half inch down into the bag. Um, I couldn't figure out how to make it stay like that quite nicely. But, you know, again, it's for my first handbag. I don't think I did too bad, right? They did actually have Plastiflex kits that you could buy. Um, not from Plastic Flex, but from one of the other companies. They had um, kits where you could buy these tiles and learn how to put them all together. I don't know if... I haven't seen any of those kits or any information on them other than that they exist online. But hopefully one will come to light someday. You know, somebody never put one together and it's sitting in Grandma's garage somewhere because that would be amazingly illustrative on how these were supposed to be done. A couple of my bags have extra tiles as the zipper pulls, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm weaving a couple of extra tiles into a zipper pull to add onto my zipper here for the final touch. A lot of uh, Plastiflux handbags have really cool Lucite pulls on them, or like a matching, like my black Plastiflux has, my bigger black Plastiflux, I have a few, um, has a matching, like separate, but larger tile um, as a pull. But I was just tying some of my extra leather here together around two of the extra tiles to create this little toggle. And I'll just thread that through the end of my metal zipper here. Now that my plastic flux is all together. And at this point I was like, oh my gosh, please I, let me sew some clothes. Because again, sewing something this 3D and immovable is not as much fun as sewing clothes is. Um, it's fun having plastic flex. I'm not going to lie and say it's the most fun putting one together. No, now I can say that because before I had no idea, but now I know. This does actually take quite a few hours as well just to get everything woven together. It took me about a good half a day to make this buddy. But here is my black vintage Plastic Flex. This is a Plastic Flex brand Plastic Flex. And here is the brand new uh, Christina, Tim, and Bianca green Plastic Flex. And this was the single-sided bag I made out of the other tiles that they sent me. They were able to print a, like a half sheet of tiles. So I went ahead and used a black uh, brocade to put this one together. And I did put my label on the inside of this one, even if the lining isn't Perfect. Um, and I actually use the back side of the tiles facing out and a metallic leather to weave these ones together. I really love the way this came out. I actually really like the way the back of the tiles look and it kind of shows the weave a little bit better. I love both sides of these things. It was actually much easier to make the single sided one of these and it would be cheaper to only print and cheaper and more, uh, you know, less time consuming to only print one side of tiles as well. So it might be worth it to only make single sided ones of these, but the vintage ones are double sided. Thank you again so much to Christina and Tim for printing these tiles for me to try. I'm super excited about having a green Plastic Flex finally. They are very rare and hard to find. Um, so this was kind of the only way I was going to get one for under several hundreds of dollars. So thank you so much for adding a green Plastic Flex to my collection. I know I'm super excited about the possibilities in this arena. I still think there are many options. Of course, there are as many tile designs as the day is long. You could do so many different creative things with this. And it's not like the uh, patent for Plastic Flex is in date any longer. I think we're all allowed to play around and make them. So if you are also a 3D designer who wants to get involved with the Plastiflex adventure, I'm sure, you know, there's, there's plenty of ground here to be shred. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this rather special project came together today. And thank you as always for watching. I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.